Hello and welcome to Head to Head on UA TV. Joining us in the studio is Denis Chernyshov. He is the Deputy Justice Minister in Ukraine. Minister, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Yeah. Uh, so my first question uh, to you today is um, about um, the reform happening in, in Ukraine's uh, prison service. Um, can you tell us firstly a bit about the international cooperation and uh, funding that you're receiving to help you reform uh, this prison service? Um, yeah, thank you for the question. And uh, first of all, I uh, want to say that uh, uh, the reform started uh, uh, previous year uh, and uh, we wait for a long way to reform the penitentiary system of Ukraine. And of course, we are very uh, uh, glad to our uh, cooperation with uh, international funds. And uh, also I can say that uh, the uh, very big help from the government of Canada. Mm. They remain, and, they're a big contributor. Uh, uh, yeah, the big yeah. contributor. And uh, uh, we uh, started to uh, work with them uh, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, work in, uh, way in uh, the aim of uh, building the system of probation in Ukraine. Mm. And uh, uh, previous week we uh, opened with uh, 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 the ambassador of Canada, the uh, center of juvenile probation in uh, Kiev, mm -hmm. and it was uh, the uh, good presentation of this uh, um, event. And uh, I think uh, it's a, a very good experience to open such uh, uh, centers of probation, uh, also juvenile probation in mm. Ukraine. And um, what is the reason for this? Now, why um, does Canada actually fund a lot of these programs? Uh, maybe because uh, they uh, want to help uh, the Ukraine because of a lot of ethnic Ukrainians uh, mm. live in uh, Canada and because of it, I think. Yeah, and why, why are there quite a lot of reforms happening now? I mean, you, you uh, took on your job in October last year, <laughs> and uh, a lot has been uh, happening uh, since then. So, so why now? What, what's so important about reforming the judicial system now? Um, just we uh, had to start it. Because from uh, the uh, former Soviet Union, it uh, didn't start. Mm. And because of it, we had to start it. But what sort of reforms are you talking about? Can you give an example, perhaps a, a, a case of how something is reforming? Uh, of course. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to change the vision of the society for the penitentiary system and the, for the workers in penitentiary system. And of course, for uh, this moment, uh, we have uh, uh, really Soviet Union prisons mm. in Ukraine. So it, bad conditions, uh, bad no. conditions, uh, uh, bad attitude, and so on, so on. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, the aim of the penitentiary system is the target is to resocialize uh, the uh, inmates. Mm. Uh, and uh, but uh, it uh, doesn't happen now. Yeah. And, w and what sort of results have you had uh, so far? in this reform process? Uh, for, first of all, um, um, we uh, had started the uh, demilitarization. And uh, uh, for example, in the previous year, it uh, was uh, approximately 80% of uh, uh, military people in penitentiary system. Mm. But for this moment, it's uh, uh, less than 30%. Yeah. Of course, we have mm. to rebuild the uh, medic system, uh, the uh, system of also probation, as I said previously. Okay, so these are the actions that you're taking, but wh what about results? I mean, for example, um, what about the, um, the, the rate at which people commit crimes again? Has it gone down? I mean, uh, uh, I can, uh, be, the reform started just previous year. And mm. uh, uh, I can say that uh, uh, the month ago I was in uh, Scotland, uh, they started the reform uh, uh, five years ago mm. and uh, the colleagues said to me, please uh, come to us in uh, 10 years and yeah. you will see the results. So it's long term, uh, it's yeah, a long term of course, reform. Of course, of course because okay. we have to rebuild, for example, the buildings and of course it will take a lot of time. Mm. And what uh, did you learn in Scotland? No, uh, what, what was the, the, advi <laughs> the advice they gave to you? Also probation. Mm. 
occupation and uh, of course the targets of resocialization of inmates and so on and so on. Uh, and uh, I can say about the results, I can say uh, uh, of uh, results uh, in uh, juvenile probation, um, I can say that uh, uh, 400 uh, uh, juvenile uh, was uh, a subject of uh, the juvenile probation mm. and the um, uh, the uh, rate of uh, uh, the second mm. uh, uh, when they commit crime again they commit yes. crime again yeah. it's less than two percent mm. it's a super result believe me yeah okay oh that's very interesting um, and uh, I wanted to ask you about um, prisons in occupied Donbass you know, following uh, Russia's invasion in 2014 there were many Ukrainian prisoners who one day found themselves in Ukrainian controlled territory and the next day found themselves in the occupied territory um, what role does your ministry play in getting these prisoners back because are, are they your responsibility uh, they, uh, it's a responsibility of international uh, uh, department Mm. of uh, the Ministry of Justice and of course the Office of Ombudsman and uh, because of uh, uh, and uh, thanks to the cooperation of uh, Ministry of Justice and uh, the Office of Ombudsman it's a, it's a big work uh, have done and uh, for example I can say that only of this uh, area of Donbass and also mm. of Crimea Mm. inmates and for example uh, in this week uh, we have work about the 11 inmates uh, which will uh, uh, return to Ukraine mm. from do, Crimea. Do you know how many there are in, in total in, in Crimea and Donbass uh, who are still... For, for this moment we don't have uh, the information about the inmates in mm. Crimea and also Because you don't have the records anymore? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, um, you know, I mean, do you, what sort of strategy do you have to continue you know, getting these people released from occupied Donbass and Crimea back into Ukrainian territory? Is there a better strategy that you're looking for or will uh, you just continue what you're doing now? Uh, our colleague and uh, the Office of Ombudsman, uh, they have uh, the strategy about this task and of course uh, I can't say to you that uh, the strategy because it's uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, talks, a lot of uh, tasks inside uh, this uh, work. Mm. Okay, so it's, it's a big task ahead. Yeah. Um, and the last year, I believe, the Ukrainian penitentiary service was uh, resolved, uh, was uh, dissolved. It, it doesn't exist anymore. And now yep. it's been moved to the. Uh, Justice Ministry. Um, how how effective you know, w was this done? You know, w was this a smooth you know, transition? Because uh, there are stories in the media that you know certain money may have gone missing, or, or you know that it wasn't done efficiently enough. You no, know, uh, what's your view on this? Uh, I can say that uh, of course it wasn't smooth uh, because it was a very old system, uh, like an old oak. Mm -hmm. And of course, it uh, it's not a flexible, and uh, uh, one of the tasks, as I said previously, about the demilitarization. Of course, there were the guys, uh, military guys, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they um, want the strong hand <laughs> yeah. in orders. Uh, but uh, we have to rebuild it, and of course, for this moment. It's very important to understand that uh, we have to rebuild the, also the vision of the society and the vision of workers of penitentiary system. And they have not to be the military men. Mm. They have to be more psychologists okay. than military. So, so what sort of vision do you have then? What, what do you imagine the future Ukrainian that prison service to look like then? Uh, I can say that uh, I have uh, the dream. What's your dream? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> it uh, looks like uh, a Norwegian penitentiary mm. system. Well, like these videos you see on the internet where the... <laughs> yeah. No. But, okay. Yeah, but it's uh, for this moment it's just a dream. Okay. And um, what, what are the main hurdles in obtaining this dream? What, what are the main challenges that lie ahead, do you think? In, in, your, in your opinion, in your like, daily work? 
Oh, uh, just simple. Uh, first of all, to rebuild the buildings, because the uh, for this moment uh, mm, we have uh, such a bad uh, conditions mm. in our prisons, and uh, believe me, it's horrible. Mm. Okay, that's the main aim. Yeah. Okay, Minister, thank you very much for joining us thank on uh, UATV. That was Denis Chernyshov. He's the Deputy Justice Minister of Ukraine. You are watching UATV.